Hello and welcome to Two Car Pros. Today we're going to be showing you how to replace the radiator for our Lexus RX 400H from 2008. The very first thing we need to do is make sure that the coolant system is not under pressure or not hot. The way you can tell this is by squeezing the upper radiator hose. If it gives way super easy like it is right now and you know I can keep my hand on it, it doesn't feel super hot. It's warm to my hand but as far as being under pressure that is not under pressure. It gives way super easy so we know we can open the coolant system without getting burnt. The next thing we need to do once we are sure that the coolant system is not under pressure is we need to remove the radiator cap. It's located here underneath this plastic trim cover piece and here it is so let's remove it. Okay to remove the radiator cap you need to push down on it with some force and turn it to the left again making sure there is no pressure left in the coolant system. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing we need to remove is this. There's a couple plastic pieces under here that are like a, a mud guard or a skid guard. I'm pretty sure they're all held in. All the bolts on here are 10 mil. That's what I have here. Is a 10 millimeter. Okay, so what I was saying is that the bolts I took out of the front of this uh, skid plate the one that came out right here looks like this. It's pointy. It's more of a screw than a bolt. I'm trying to see if my camera will focus on it. It's not. Okay. And then the bolt I took out of here is threaded like a normal bolt. It's not pointy. It is definitely more of a bolt than a screw. So just keep in mind uh, which bolt or screw came from where. I mean, they'll only really fit where. <laughs> Where you got them from, anyway? I don't. I, you really couldn't mix them up. All right, now this uh, skid plate or air dam or plastic valance piece comes off, and we can move on. Okay, so I am underneath the car now, and it is impossible to see. But you see this little yellow thing back here? That's the radiator petcock. I am wearing goggles because oh that one's about to drip oh don't drip on my camera okay that is what I'm gonna be loosening it's gonna get messy that yellow thing way back there oh, come on camera play nice with me yes that thing back there um, that's what you turn to the left and all the coolant's gonna spill everywhere so get a drain pan ready There we go. So that's what that looks like. Out of the car. Put that somewhere safe. Okay, so we need to remove this plastic piece here in order to remove this air intake duct. Um, we need to remove these body clips. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Let me get a zoom on it. Okay, so this is the body clip in question. These are some of the easiest body clips I've ran into. All you do is you push down on the middle piece here. This releases them. And then you can just kind of tug at the trim piece and it'll fly out at you and then it comes right out. Make sure to hold on to those. There's three of them. One here, one here, one over here. Um, I already took two out. And with the third, this just... My bad, there's another one in the front here. You can basically use any tool you want to push that in. I just had this body clip removal tool handy because I thought that's what I was going to need. And maybe I still do. Yeah, that one was a little tougher to get out, but the rest were really easy. And now we can remove this. There we go. Now we can take off these 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the air intake tube, or duct, or however you want to say it. But this plastic piece has got to go. There we go. And then... You could leave it flopping around and stuff if you really wanted to, but I'm going to remove it completely so it's fully out of the way and not annoying. 
And if you leave it, come to think of it, if you leave it flopping around, it has a big chance of tearing the boot here. And um, that's going to leave you more problems. So yeah, just remove that. Next, we're going to remove this plastic piece here. Uh, it's, I think it's just a battery cover. You push down these ones too. You do? Oh. Okay, you just push down on them like the little ones, but they're a bit bigger. And then that lifts off, exposing your battery, but we don't need to worry about that too much. What we're looking for is the upper radiator hose, so we can go ahead and remove that now. Okay, when removing your upper radiator hose, you can use a big pair of channel locks, or you can use this tool here. This is a super cool tool for removing spring-loaded uh, radiator clamps. I have a whole video on there on YouTube explaining what these are and how great they are. You can get cheaper ones on Amazon for pretty cheap. Um, these are snap-on, I believe. So these are pretty, they are snap-on, so these are pretty expensive, but they do make cheaper versions and they work amazing, as you can see right now. See, as, as I squeeze this handle, this will tighten, and the spring clamp will become easily off. What's really nice about these is you can kind of mess with them a bit more and you're not worried about, you know, the... if you're using a pair of channel locks slipping off and biting your finger or whatnot, and then to release you just grip them, push the safety in, and release. And now that that nice clamp there is off of the fitting, so we can kind of twist it and pull it off. It might, it might take some work. This, this is definitely the original radiator here. So it might take a little work to kind of muscle it off. You, you, you don't want to break off the plastic piece that's in here, because the radiator has a plastic tube coming out like this and the hose is on it and if you snap off the plastic piece the basically the fitting um, that could be bad so you, you want to be kind of firm but gentle here um, you know what would work really well is if you had a, a pick or a screwdriver and you kind of just wedged it in there and peeled it off like this this is a mechanics pick and it's exactly what this is for you want to be you want to be as gentle as you can with still getting a result because you really don't want to damage this. There we go. So I just went around I went around it with a mechanics pick and I kind of unbound it from the plastic fitting that goes into the radiator. We don't need to remove this side from the engine because, uh, or the, this tube from the engine, the operator hose from the engine, um, because we're not replacing it. If we were replacing it, then you'd have to, but uh, we're not doing that today. We're only doing the radiator. Okay, so the next thing we need to remove is this. It all comes apart with 10 mil, I'm pretty sure. It's funny. That they say eight on the bolt, but it's they really mean 10. I wonder if I could show that to you. Surely it doesn't mean grade 8. Surely not. Super tough to see, but it does in fact say 8 on them. Maybe that's just an internal thing at a Lexus. Like they just say they're type 8 bolts, not necessarily the size. It could be. There's two more over here in more or less the same place. Next, we remove the uh, hood latch from underneath here. We're not going to be removing the hood latch. We're probably just going to let that uh, dangle for a bit while we're while we're navigating the radiator out. That was a 10 mil on the bottom and a 10 mil up top. 
That's definitely something I like about Japanese cars is everything's 10 mil. Or nearly everything. Not everything, but most of the time if you bet 10 mil, you're going to be correct. There's also a bolt or something hidden under here that we need to get. We have to pry this sort of open. Maybe a thinner screwdriver. I have no earthly idea why they put a cover on top of a nut there. Maybe so no one steals your hood latch? I don't know. Now with that out, this metal piece on top should come off. Save that for later. Okay, so now the hood latch mechanism is out. I'm not going to remove it. I'm just going to kind of let it dangle. You can unplug it. So that makes it a little bit easier to locate. We can, we can store this kind of behind here and not really worry about it. So that's nice. The next thing we can do is unplug the horns. So we don't need to unbolt them. That's kind of nice. That's a nice little treat. They just pinch from the side and you pull them out. Pinch from the side and pull them out. There we go. And now this is free to remove. Now let's move these wires out of the way because they're on top of the unit we're replacing. These are for the horn and hood latch. Okay, so here's a speed bump I've ran into. Um, so there's an electrical connector down here. I'm not sure what it does. Maybe it's uh, air in temperature into the radiator sensor or something. Maybe a rain sensor. I don't know. But it goes down there and it plugs into a sensor but we need this out of the way so we can get the radiator out. So we're going to need to remove this plastic piece here. It doesn't look too bad. And then we can get our hand down there and unplug it. So these are unlike the other clips. You need to pull up on the center of them and they come out. This is, this is more like a, a traditional body clip right here. So I pulled up on this. On this piece with a small standard screwdriver. I pulled up and then the whole assembly comes out. So we need to remove this so we can get down in there. See that little sensor? Way down there. That's the one. That's what we got to unplug. There we go. So now we need to unmount it from the side here. There's a little anchor on this side just there. You kind of just force it through. Those little, those little hooks you just push in from both sides. You kind of pinch it from both sides. And just kind of massage it out. There you go. Oh, there's another one. There's another one deep down, or right here. Let's see if I can get it. Lined. I can't see it either, sorry. The backhand, one of my tricks. There we go, the backhand worked. And now we can remove this from the top of the radiator. There we go. And cast that aside as another victory. We're one step closer.
Okay, so the next thing we need to do is remove this bracket. This bracket holds the radiator and the AC condenser together. And we need to remove it. This over here is a 12 bolt or a 12 millimeter bolt. There's one over here as well. We need to remove both of these. There's two more bolts on the front of it, and those are eight millimeters. There's also a couple of bolts on the back side here, on this bracket here. They're 10 millimeters on the back side. We need to remove this one as well, back here. That flips up, at least freeing it from the uh, AC condenser. Okay, there we go, and then you just pull straight up on it and it comes right out. Okay, that's not bad. Next thing we need to do is unplug this tube that's uh, basically the reservoir tube or the, the blow off tube. Well, not blow off, but uh, it's for extra radiator fluid when the car heats up to travel down that tube and into the reservoir, the overfill reservoir. So we need to remove that because it's a part of the radiator fan assembly and we need to remove that next. There we go. That's free from there, that's good. Okay, the next thing we need to do is unplug the radiator fans. Now there's one, there's one that's fairly easy to see. It's this one located on the right, if you're looking directly at it. Uh, the other one unplugs the same way, it's just obscured by the reservoir on the left. So you can apply what I'm telling you now to the fan on the left as well as the right. Okay, so to remove that connector right there, I just had a very small screwdriver or some other metal object, and I used my thumb and I pushed down here, right there, and I pushed down and I pulled backwards, I did the same thing for this gray connector. So we need to that, do that to the other fan as well, and then we need to remove them out of the uh, radiator fan assembly. They're kind of stored, they're kind of anchored here on little plastic uh, anchors, we need to take those off so the wiring harness can be independent of the radiator housing, or radiator fan housing, excuse me. Now for this next part, you're not going to be able to see a darn thing, I'm just showing you that I'm actually unplugging this radiator fan too, you just can't see because the reservoir is in the way. A little tight back there, but not bad. Now we need to remove the uh, plastic anchors there. You want to be careful with them because you can break them really easily. There's one there. There's another one way down in there. We gotta remove. It's almost easier to push them from the back. I mean, there, there's. It's hard to describe. They basically have two little fish, fish hooks. They kind of look like this. They have two little fish hooks there. And it works best if you can pinch them from behind, uh, but there's not always room. So you just kind of, kind of have to do your best. There we go. See, they kind of look like, kind of look like this. I wonder if I can get a zoom in for you. Yeah, they look like this. You're supposed to pinch them, but there's not always room behind it. So just do your best to try to massage and wiggle them out. They do eventually come out. Okay. Well, this one was held in with tape, and the tape gave way before I could get rid of the anchor. So. We're just going to have to chalk it up to a win and tape it back in place later. There's yet another plastic anchor down here. But after that, 
the fan wiring harness is now completely independent of the radiator fan shroud assembly. Now the only thing holding this in should be some bolts on the bottom. So we gotta go take care of those. Okay, this next part's gonna be kind of tricky because um, there's no way for me to show you. But there's basically a bolt here. I'm, I'm literally feeling for them. There's a bolt over here. I thought there was a bolt in the middle, maybe not. There's definitely at least two bolts here on the bottom. And then this lower radiator hose also hooks onto the fan shroud. You need to remove those as well. And I'm pretty sure those are the those awful plastic anchors. So you need to remove all of that and then the shroud can come out. I, I'm sorry I can't show you if I if I had a smaller camera and like a really tiny tripod maybe, but I, I just can't show you. I don't have the equipment, but yeah, that's what I'll be doing next. Okay, now we can finally move on to removing the radiator fan. There we go. Might take some finessing, but it'll come out eventually. Next we can remove the bottom radiator hose. You're going to want to put in a... Uh, uh, some sort of catch basin underneath it to catch any of the excess fluid that might run off. I did this step last because it's easier to get to it uh, now without all the stuff in the way. You can get it from the bottom early on if you wanted to. It's just uh, I decided to do it this way. So now we're going to remove the ra lower radiator hose. You can see why I own this tool now. There we go. See the reason for the catch basin? You're gonna need it. It's probably gonna pee out for a little while now. But that's okay. All right, there's two more bolts on the bottom side of the radiator here. This is technically the AC condenser, but it goes through the AC condenser into the radiator. Those are the last bolts holding it on. At least I hope so. I'm human, so I can make mistakes. There we go. These long suckers. There's one on this side. And there's one on the other. Okay, here's the other one. It's on the right. This one's on the right side of the car. Okay, surprises of all surprises. There's two more bolts holding this thing on. There's one way down here that sort of holds the radiator to this cradle thing it sits in. And there's one way down there. I already got that one. It's located right underneath the uh, where the low radiator hose attaches. It's underneath there on the cradle. I'm not going to show you because I can't get the camera in there. And I'm not going to show you on this one because many curse words are going to be involved in removing that bolt. Whoever put that bolt there, I don't know where you are, but please never make another car because... It is really difficult to get to. I use some wood here to kind of wedge it up into place, but you don't want to wrench on it too hard because you might interfere with this, your AC condenser lines, and those are fragile. And if they break, let's just say you don't want them to break. So you remove those two bolts as well, and I'm sure there's another set of two bolts I'm not seeing. Okay, now with those two bolts that are underneath removed, those are 12 millimeter bolts for people that, uh, only buy one wrench at a time. And now I can finally remove your radiator. You want to be careful and not nail anything on your way up. You're going to need to kind of navigate it through different hoses and wires that are going to be in your way. And there we go. There's the radiator. Finally out. Lots of scratches. You can see why we're replacing it. Plus it leaks. Okay, so we got rid of our old radiator and this is our new one! This is a brand new Denso radiator. It's correct from factory. Compare it to your old one. 
to make sure it's identical. I've already done that. It is just like the one we just took out. So we're going to put it back in. And you want to be really careful. Make sure you don't hit anything. You don't want to break anything off. It's all made of plastic, so you got to be, or rubber, and it's, you got to be really careful. It kind of fits back into that, uh, it's kind of like a cradle, kind of like a radiator cradle. So once you've done that, you can put those two bolts that are way down here, you know, way down here and they point up. There's two of them on each side pointing up bottom from the, it holds from the cradle into the bottom of the radiator. You got to put those back in. No, I don't have a torque spec for them because you, there's no way you could get a torque wrench on it. Um, so just tight is uh, really good enough and now we can start putting this thing back together. That's exciting. So we can put our radiator fan assembly back in. Make sure you don't snap anything. That would suck the fun right out of it. Next we need to replace this bracket here. It goes on top of the radiator and the AC condenser and holds the fans in place. At least the top half. Okay, with the radiator fan reinstalled, we can now plug the fans back in. Okay, this great connection. You actually didn't need to undo, but I did anyway. Being an overachiever. I'm also gonna... Oh, let's just focus on the fan real quick. There you go. That just pushes back on. And then this one's already routed down here. There, both radiator fans are now plugged back in. The coolant overflow line is next, so you plug that back in. There you go. You can put these back on. Put these back on here, like this. And then we need to put... Okay, we need to plug that uh, sensor back in. We need to install the plastic anchors that we love so much. Back into their homes, and then we need to plug it in way down there. It's easier to get it from the bottom. There we go. Okay, next we install this plastic piece, or plastic, this is metal, this metal piece back in, like so. This is going to hold our radiator in place and uh, also provide mounting brackets for a couple different things. Oh wait, sorry I've forgotten. Helps to have a hood latch. You can put that back in its place. And I'm going to thread all these by hand before I tighten them down because there is a fair bit of play with these rubber bumpers there. These short uh, start to black well. I think all those short black bubbles should make it easier for you when you put them the box. Okay, a quick summary of what I've just done is I've bolted this back in place. There's no torque spec, don't ask. And there's two on each side there. I put the horns back in. I plug those in. Don't forget to plug in your headlight, I have not headlight, hood uh, sensor there so your car can tell if your hood is shut. And now we need to put the body pins back into here, which I believe are this type, this type here. So you just place Put them in place, you know, let the holes real good, and put this in here. And once it's the body's in, you push down, and it's locked in place. And a couple of the body clips broke. It's helpful to own one of these. I know it says GM Chrysler Body Hardware, but they're all the same thing, really. This is a box that contains a bunch of different body clips. It's helpful if you own, for instance, a car. I mean, any car really is going to benefit from buying this box. 
You just have to find one that's similar, or at least similarly sized, to the one you need. There's really nothing you can do about body clips a lot of the times. Um, they just snap when you take them out. There's really nothing you can do about it. Manufacturers are super okay with charging you for them though. Okay, once that's replaced, we can move on. So next we need to put the air intake boot back in. It's all 10 mil. Then of course you need to tighten it at the actual boot into the air box. Now you can put this plastic piece back on. Makes it look all nice. This is held on with more body clips. Leave these, these light trim pieces are held on with these really small fine ones. You just put them on and snap them in place. That's pretty easy. And these are really, really fragile. I've broken a couple, taking this thing apart. Um, they are available at AutoZone, I'm sure Lexus or Toyota or so ship them to you. I got a whole box. I'm going to see if we can find one petite enough to hold this on because it's a pretty small hole. Yeah, that does work. Okay, don't look great. I wish they were black to match, but they do hold really well, so I like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, the next thing we need to do is put the upper radiator hose back on. Place that back onto there. And walk the, the spring clamp back on. You really don't want to put your fingers around there because this can slide off at any moment and uh, pinch your finger really badly. I've had it torch, I've had it tear chunks of my skin off before, just because I wasn't paying attention. There we go. Bites you a little bit, not bad though. Now we can do the low radiator hose. Okay, so we have a problem where when we use our tool, or even if you used a pair of channel locks, um, the way they designed this spring clamp won't go through the housing right here. See that tang is hanging down too far? We need to remove that. I'm not sure who designed those spring clamps, but they weren't paying attention. There so what go. happens is this tang right here runs into this so it doesn't open enough to get the hose over the radiator so we just use a small pair of dikes or a big pair of dikes or you can use a grinder or whatever you need to to, to cut this off right here the, the clamp won't lock anymore but it will uh, open enough to where you can put back on the hose so that's that's what we're doing so this is what it looks like underneath now that's the radiator hose we put on sorry i wasn't able to show you that in real time it was a little bit difficult to main the camera and get that hose back on. I had to do that little trick as you showed, as we showed, you saw. And then you gotta put this, uh, this hose back in its little clamps, those little plastic anchors, you gotta put those back in so this hose doesn't wiggle around. But yeah, this project's really shaping up. Project's a job. It's a job. Now we need to put the plastic skid plate back on. Okay, uh, I'm a little silly and I forgot to push record when I was putting this back in. My bad. But the skid plate's back in and the uh, fasteners by the jacking point are actually uh, bolts. And then the rest of them, I believe there's another couple of bolts, but a lot of them are these screws, see that? So it's a screw, a little different from the bolts. So these got to go in too. Now these don't really hold too much on. They're really more aesthetic reasons.
There we go. And you just need to finish putting all the bolts into the skid plate here. It doesn't rattle around. But this skid plate's super fragile. This was, I didn't even realize this when I took it off. This was already broken off of here. So you're supposed to take that bolt out, but there's nothing I can do. The plastic part on the skid plate has already uh, been kind of yanked off there. And that's just because years of wear and tear. This car's nine years old, so it's not abnormal to, you know, see things that are little plastic pieces that are broken and stuff. There we go. Stop that from rattling. So the skid plate's back on. We're on the home stretch. Well now we can put this both trim pieces back on here. Well not both, just the one actually. And that is secured in place with these little body clips. So you gotta push them in the middle to get them to re you know, be able to be secured again. So once they're in this up position here, you can push them back down. I'm gonna try to get my good zoom on it. Okay, so you wanna make sure they're even with the housing. That means they're locked in place like that. If you push them any further, that's how you get them out and you're back at stair one, step one. Okay, so now we're going to be using I like using this really nice funnel I have because it kind of locks into place. It doesn't really go anywhere. You can use a normal funnel. What I'm doing here is basically a normal funnel. You don't need anything crazy. A normal funnel just just fine. I just like this one because it's convenient. Here's the coolant we're going to be using today. 50-50 pre-diluted, super long life antifreeze for Toyota, for Toyota filled vehicles. It is a pink fluid. Need that. So go buy this. If you want to be really fancy, you can measure out how much you add or you took out and just put that exact same amount back in, provided you didn't spill much, which let's be honest, we all spilled. Now the cool thing about this funnel is you can fill it up to the very top and even if the car couldn't accept this much coolant, which I'm pretty sure it will actually. So let's say it, it couldn't do the rest. There's just no more room left in the system. You can use this cork to stop it and then you can remove the whole thing and have very little spillage. That's why I like this thing. Okay, so what I've done now is I've uh, started the engine here. Now the way to do that on a hybrid, this is the hybrid version obviously. Uh, you need to put the key in the ignition, you know, and act like you're starting it with your foot on the brake and then just push the gas. That will hopefully have the engine turn on there and at least idle and maybe charge the Prius, not the Prius battery, the hybrid battery, excuse me a little bit. That will warm up the coolant. Oh, you can even see it. It's going. So the engine turned off again. I'm going to go push the gas. Hopefully it'll come back on because we need the engine to get warm so the thermostat will open and that will fill out the chambers in the engine and then the radiator more. You can also leave the thing on. You can also leave the AC on. You can see the, the bubbles are coming up out of here uh, because it needs more coolant as the thermostat opens and more chambers in the engine are available to the coolant. And you want as, as much coolant as you know you can in there for as far as manufacturer spec goes. Um, I might be here a while trying to purge the system of air with a, with a hybrid. I don't think the engine's on, and the engine needs to be on in order for this to work. That's still bubbling up. That's what makes this funnel really, really cool. I definitely rec recommend this funnel. It's, it's really, really good. I got it off Amazon for 
$12 worth every penny. See, even left to its own devices like I just did, I didn't push the gas in, do anything. The engine will eventually click itself back on in order to charge the, the hybrid battery. So just leave the AC on full blast, turn up the radio, do whatever, and then the, uh, the engine will click on and it'll warm up. You can tell how hot the engine is. You don't touch the engine, but you can lightly touch the upper radiator hose to get a feel of how hot it is. If it's so hot it's unbearable, that really does mean that it is at temperature. But if you can keep your hand on it for a while, it's really not at operating temp yet, and you want it to be at operating temperature. Okay, that's as full as it's really going to get. It's also a good idea, just keep an eye on it the next couple of days. The cool thing about these newer cars is um, they'll tell you if they're low on coolant. So don't be too worried about it. There we go. Little bit of spillage, not bad. And then I'm emptying the coolant I didn't use back into its container so I can have it for later. I kind of want to absorb the coolant that's in this uh, blue tube here so it doesn't go everywhere when I take it off. There we go, perfect! That's exactly what I needed to do. We're going to make sure the radiator cap's in good shape. This one's in pretty good shape actually. If, if yours doesn't look like this or you know, at least in good shape, you know, the rubble's all, if the rubber's all rotted on it or something, just get a new one or else your engine will overheat. And then we need to install this. Okay, that's just the way it looks. Okay, that's uh, fine. And then we also want to take a look at our reservoir. We'll take a look at our reservoir here and make sure that it is f at least to the fill line. Which this one is not, so we need to fill it up to the fill line. It's a little hard to see, and I can't really show it on the camera, but if you look at it from the left, you'll see where it says full. There's a big line. There we go. See now there's fluid in there. It is right up to the full line. And that looks perfect. And then if I were you, I'd just keep an eye on it for the next couple of days. And then the last trim piece here needs to go on here because you don't want to look at your radiator cap. And this is also held in with body clips. I broke the original ones taking them out so I'm going to replace them with these ones that hopefully screw into place and look good. Oh yeah, those look great. Perfect. Oh, and then don't forget to close your reservoir cap. There you go, all done. And there you go, that's the job completed. It took about two to three hours or so, depending on roadblocks, which there were a few. However, if I can do it, you can definitely do it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to catch our giveaway at 40,000 subscribers, and I'll see you next time.